The Little Mermaid. Read the story along with me and find out what happens. You'll know when it's time to turn the page when you hear this sound. Far beneath the ocean's surface lived the enchanting mer people. Their ruler was King Triton. He had seven daughters, and Ariel, his youngest, loved to sing. Triton was so proud of Ariel's voice that he had planned a royal concert. All the mer people would be there, and Sebastian, the court composer, was really looking forward to conducting his new symphony before the king. The day of the concert finally arrived. To introduce Ariel, her six sisters swam in front of a large seashell. When Sebastian gave the sign, they opened the shell. But instead of Ariel appearing, the shell was empty. Ariel! King Triton yelled. But Ariel didn't hear him. She'd forgotten all about the royal concert and was far away from the royal palace. Ariel and her best friend Flounder spent most of their time exploring sunken shipwrecks. Whenever they found a small human treasure, Ariel added it to her hidden collection. On this particular day, Ariel and Flounder were exploring an old shipwreck. Flounder thought the place was scary, but Ariel was very excited. She even found an object she had never seen before—a fork. What is it? Flounder asked. I don't know," replied Ariel excitedly. "But I bet Scuttle will." So the two of them swam to the water's surface to find Ariel's friend, a seagull named Scuttle. Ariel showed Scuttle her new treasure. "I do believe this is a dingle hopper," said Scuttle. "Humans use these little babies to straighten their hair out." Just then, Ariel remembered that she was supposed to sing at the concert, and she and Flounder hurried home. Back at the palace, King Triton was so angry that he ordered Sebastian to follow Ariel and keep her out of trouble. Later that day, a huge shadow darkened the waters above her secret cave. What do you suppose? began Ariel. Before Sebastian could stop her, Ariel swam to the surface and discovered that the shadow was actually a ship. Ariel pulled herself up to the edge of the deck, where she saw humans. She was fascinated by the handsome young man the others called Prince Eric. He was looking at his birthday present—a huge, foolish statue of himself. "Ha!" Huh, said Eric. "It's really..." Something. Hurricane a coming! A sailor suddenly shouted. The ship began to pitch and roll in the storm. Then a bolt of lightning struck the mast and set the ship on fire. Look out! Yelled Eric as the ship hit some tall rocks. The men jumped into the lifeboats, but before Eric could leap from the deck, an explosion knocked him unconscious and threw him into the sea. Ariel dove into the fiery debris to save Eric. Using all her strength, she swam with him toward shore and pulled him onto the sand. Is he dead? Ariel asked.、Mm, it's hard to say," replied Scuttle as he listened for Eric's heartbeat to see if the prince was alive. Unfortunately, Scuttle was listening to Eric's foot, but Ariel saw that he was breathing and sang softly to him. When Ariel heard voices approaching, she quickly disappeared into the water. Then Ariel and her friends watched from a large rock. Eric had never seen Ariel; he'd only heard her beautiful voice. But Ariel had fallen in love with him. After Ariel returned to her cave, her father showed up. Without meaning to, Sebastian told the king that Ariel was in love with a human. Triton was furious. Contact between the human world and the mer world is strictly forbidden, 
he thundered. Daddy, I love him, Ariel protested. Stunned, Triton raised his trident and shattered all of Ariel's special human treasures. After her father left, Ariel was very unhappy. Then two evil eels, Flotsam and Jetsam, slithered out from behind some rocks. Don't be scared, said Jetsam. We represent someone who can help. Someone who can make all your dreams come true. Before she knew it, Ariel was inside the deep, dark cave of Ursula, the Sea Witch. The Sea Witch offered to help Ariel visit the prince for a fee. Now, said Ursula, here's the deal. I'll make you a potion that will turn you into a human for three days. If the prince kisses you before sunset on the third day, you'll remain human permanently. But if he doesn't, Ursula added, you'll turn back into a mermaid and you'll belong to me. Like all mean witches, Ursula wanted something in return. What I want from you is your voice, Ursula exclaimed. Then Ursula recited a magical spell and a mist rose up surrounding Ariel. Reluctantly, Ariel signed her name to Ursula's deal. The little mermaid's voice was sucked from her throat into a shell necklace around Ursula's neck. Suddenly, Ariel couldn't talk or sing. Then a bright light flashed and Ariel's tail was transformed into two legs. Now Ariel could no longer live underwater. Sebastian and Flounder helped her to the surface so that she could breathe. Ariel stared with wonder at her new legs. Since the storm, Prince Eric had searched every day for the girl who had rescued him. That voice, I can't get it out of my head, he said to his dog, Max. When Eric saw Ariel, he thought he had finally found his rescuer, but because she couldn't speak, he said, You can't be who I thought you were. Still, Eric invited her for dinner at his castle. That night, Ariel found a dingle hopper next to her plate. Not knowing any better, she started combing her hair with it. The next day, Eric took Ariel on a romantic boat ride in a sparkling lagoon. They had a wonderful time. But just as the prince was about to kiss Ariel, splash! Flotsam and Jetsam tipped over the rowboat. Ursula saw it all through her magic bubble. Nice work, boys, she said. That was a close one. Too close. Worried that the prince would kiss Ariel before sunset the next day, Ursula came up with a wicked plan. She turned herself into a beautiful young woman and called herself Vanessa. With Ariel's voice locked inside the shell necklace, Ursula sounded just like Ariel. When Ursula walked near Eric's castle, the prince thought she was his rescuer. She sang with the same beautiful voice of the girl who had pulled him from the sea. The sea witch quickly put a spell on Eric and he decided to marry her right away. Ariel was broken hearted when she heard the news. But there was nothing Ariel could do. She didn't know that Vanessa was really Ursula in disguise. On the day of the wedding, Ariel, Flounder and Sebastian were near the water's edge when Scuttle arrived. The prince is marrying the sea witch in disguise, announced Scuttle. Ariel and her friends hurried to the ship. In the middle of the wedding, a group of birds attacked the sea witch. Then Scuttle snatched away the shell necklace. The necklace fell onto the deck. A golden mist streamed from the broken shell and into Ariel's throat. Overwhelmed with joy, Ariel started to sing 
and Eric rush towards her to kiss her. You're too late, bragged Ursula, who turned back into her mean self. Ariel tried to run, but she fell because she was a mermaid again. Ursula dragged helpless Ariel back into the sea. Suddenly, King Triton emerged from the depths and confronted the sea witch. Let her go, he demanded. Not a chance, Triton, said Ursula. We made a deal. Ursula showed him the golden scroll signed by Ariel. Without thinking twice, King Triton pointed his glowing trident at the scroll and changed Ariel's name into his own. He was now Ursula's prisoner and Ariel was free. At last, Ursula cried and grabbed the golden trident. Now she was the ruler of all the seas. Ursula grew to an enormous size. With the trident, she stirred the water into a raging whirlpool and even raised a ship from the bottom of the sea. Eric climbed aboard and steered the ship straight towards the sea witch. Ah! Ursula screamed in pain when the ship struck her. Within seconds, only a few tentacles were left floating around the ship. The sea witch's spell was broken and Triton retrieved his trident. He was once again ruler of the underwater world. With wicked Ursula gone, Everything returned to normal in King Triton's undersea kingdom. But now that Ariel was a mermaid again, she couldn't be with her beloved Prince Eric. King Triton saw how unhappy Ariel was and used his magic powers to give her legs. King Triton, Flounder and Sebastian all knew they would miss Ariel, but they also knew she would be happiest on land with her prince. Soon Prince Eric and Ariel were married and they lived happily ever after. <laughs>